Marion studied and was eventually invited to perform in concert halls in Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. The enthusiasm for her singing was so overwhelming that one newspaper in Sweden called it Marian Fever. Audience, audiences applauded in London, cheered in Paris, and pounded on the stage for encores in Russia. In Austria, the world-famous conductor Arturo Toscanini announced that what he had heard one was privileged to hear only once in a hundred years. That's how good she is. Marion felt as if she had finally achieved some success. She even asked mother if there was anything she wanted that would make her happy because now Marion could afford to buy it for her. Mother said that all she wanted was for God to hold Marion in the highest of his hands. It seemed like she was already there. Mr. Boghetti had been right. She could go anywhere and sing for anyone. Until she came home to the United States. In 19... Ugh. In 1939, Howard University in Washington, D.C. booked a concert with Marian Anderson and began looking for an auditorium big enough to hold the audience she attracted. They decided that the 4,000-seat Constitution Hall would be perfect. But the manager of the hall said it wasn't available and no other dates were offered because of their white performers only policy. Marion's agent, Saul Hurrock, wrote to the hall manager, pointing out that Marion Anderson was one of the greatest living singers of our time. But it did no good. Enraged fans wrote letters to the newspaper. In protest, Eleanor Roosevelt, the First Lady of the United States, resigned from the organization that sponsored Constitution Hall. Howard University then tried to reserve a large high school auditorium from an all-white school. Again, they were denied. Now, teachers were angry and marched in support of Marion in front of the Board of Education. Washington, D.C. was a boiling pot about to spill over. Wasn't there someplace in her own country's capital where Marian Anderson's voice could be heard? Right now I'm sort of thinking um, compare and contrast about how she was treated um, and her time in Europe and traveling all over those countries and then comparing that to her treatment in the United States. Hmm. Committees formed and held meetings. Finally, with President Roosevelt's approval, the Department of the Interior of the United States government invited Marion to sing on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on Easter Sunday. Her country was offering her a, a momentous invitation, but she had concerns. Would people protest? Was it dangerous? Would anyone come? Examining her heart, Marion realized that although she was a singer first and foremost, she also had become a symbol to her people and she wanted to make it easier for those who would follow her. She said yes. Standing in the shadow of the statue of Lincoln, waiting to be called out, she read the engraved words, this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. She's extremely brave. Marion looked out on a river of 75,000 people. Her heart beat wildly. Would she be able to utter one note? 
She took a deep breath and felt the power of her audience's goodwill surge toward her. Marion's sisters were there, and mother too. Marion stood straight and tall. Then she closed her eyes and sang, My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, let freedom ring. A roaring cheer followed every song. At the end of the program, the people pleaded for more. When she began her thought-provoking encore. Oh, nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows my sorrow. Silence settled on the multitudes. So the audience was silent. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Washington DC and been to the memorials there. Um, but the Lincoln Memorial is right inside there. It's a big statue. And then there's the famous steps um, where Martin Luther King also gave his I Have a Dream speech. I went to college in Maryland, um, right outside of DC. So I did spend a lot of time in DC. Now taking a look at the audience members, they're all just eyes closed, seem to be enjoying her song, Rela relaxing sort of, just enjoying the moment, sort of thinking about it. It's a pretty important symbol. Let's take a look at this picture first before I turn. For almost 16 years after the Lincoln Memorial performance, Marion sang for kings and queens, presidents and prime ministers, famous composers and conductors. She received medals, awards, and honorary degrees for her magnificent voice. But there was still one place Marion had not sung. When she was finally invited, a dream came true. Marion wondered how people would react. No Negro singer had ever done such a thing. She would be the first. But she didn't need to worry. After she signed the contract, someone said, Welcome home. On opening night, excitement charged the air. As Marion waited in the wings, the orchestra began. Her stomach fluttered. She walked onto the grand stage. Trembling, she straightened her costume and waited for the pounding music she knew to be her cue. Tonight was her debut with the Metropolitan Opera. At long last, she had reached the sun and the moon. The curtains parted. And Marion sang. The end. There's some information here um, from the author. <clears throat> and some credits. I guess this must be a picture. Let's see. Here, let's take a look um, at this one section. It's telling. Here, let me zoom on in. The notable dates in Marian Anderson's life. Now take a look. 1897, she was born in Philadelphia on February 27th. CA, I think that means circa, so like about, they're not exactly sure. 1903, age six, performs with Union Baptist, Baptist Church Junior Choir. 
about 1907. She's age 10 or 11. That just means they're not certain about it. Um, chosen for the People's Chorus. What do we call this? Yeah, it's a timeline. And so this is a chronological list of the important events in her life. Let's see. Age 15, she postpones entrance to high school to help support her family. Ah, yes, this was after her dad died. So 1909, her father died at age 34. And then a couple years later, when she's 15, that's when she postpones high school so she can help support her family. 1915, at age 18, she was denied entrance to music school and enters William Penn High School. And it continues to go on. So I'm thinking about all of the challenges that she faced in her lifetime and how she overcame them um, with her strength and resiliency. Um, and even though a lot of things weren't very fair for Marion, um, that she kept in mind her dreams and her goals. Um, I'm gonna post a question for you to answer um, in the Google Classroom. So if you could please respond to that, that would be great. I hope you enjoyed the book. Bye.